Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and set for our first major conversation where workers of the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company, PLC, um, have called off the uh, industrial strike, which they embarked upon in the early hours of Monday. Uh, this follows a communique signed by the management of the company and the unionist representatives as well as regulatory agencies in which it was resolved that the workers call off the action and resume work immediately. Now, the management of NACO uh, at the meeting held at the NACO Avion's house uh, in Ikeja agreed to withdraw the suit it filed against the unions at the National Industrial Court. Uh, also, the parties agreed that negotiations on staff welfare uh, will resume on January 25 and be concluded within the week. It was also agreed that no member of staff would be victimized for participation in the strike. Now, hundreds of passengers yesterday, if you recall, uh, had their travel plans disrupted at the international and local wings of the Motala Mohammed Airport in Lagos, in Lagos on Monday uh, because of the uh, staff, uh, the strike embarked on by the staff of the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company, PLC, over uh, salary increment issues. NACO workers were said to have walked out of the international airport in the early hours of Monday, leading to the cancellation and delay of several flights scheduled uh, for the day, according to passengers affected by the development. Well, we have joining us this morning to discuss the impact of the strike on the aviation sector and the issues surrounding this strike, Mr. Uh, Wally Shadore, who is the aviation editor of the New Telegraph newspaper in Lagos. Uh, Wally, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you very much. And please give us a, 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 a better understanding of the issues behind this strike uh, by workers of a national aviation handling company. And who exactly are these workers? Are they the ones who handled our luggage? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yesterday was a very difficult one for air travel in Nigeria, uh, particularly from the Lagos um, airport, the Nutella Manor International Airport. As early as 6 o'clock, the passengers didn't know uh, what awaited them. So we got to the airport as early as six, five, six o'clock for their flight. Uh, some of them were travelers going to uh, Doha, uh, traveling to Doha. And when we got the, to the airport and they were supposed to be checked in, uh, the NACO workers told them that they were on strike and they chose deadline. It was just everywhere because um, they couldn't go, they couldn't be checked in and uh, uh, it took a, a very big toll, not only on the passengers, but we also took a toll on the aviation uh, value chain. Because not only Qatar Airways passengers that were stranded, we also had a lot of people on um, Rwanda, Delta, Virgin Atlantic that were stranded. So it has become, it became a very chaotic uh, situation yesterday. So what uh, these NACO workers do primarily is we call them ground handling workers. What they do, they are the people you see that check in your luggage, um, you get to the airport you want to travel, you check in your luggage, you check in your baggage, they give you boarding passes, they have to clean the aircraft, they have to move the uh, luggage into the aircraft, even take into the aircraft. So they have, have a lot of work to do, and we tell them airlines. Uh, scheduled passenger airlines can never, never uh, take off. I think the NACO workers and their management have been at loggerheads for quite um, maybe one week, two weeks over um, uh, salary remuneration and analysis. What people didn't know, people thought, or the airlines thought that this matter had been resolved uh only for the workers to go uh, make good their trip yesterday to embark on the track that caused a lot of dislocation uh in travel i think uh, cumulatively the airlines could have lost over three four billion naira yesterday to this action of the uh, uh, strike action so um the good thing is that the matter was resolved after maybe after about four, five, six hours yesterday because the workers' union entered into a meeting, crucial meeting, because it was necessary. The House of Reps had to call, waited into the matter to see a peaceful resolution of the matter. Eventually, the strike was called off around, um, I think, four or three or four p.m. yesterday. 
And uh, I wouldn't call it normalcy, but because it will take a, a, a while before normalcy can return. Most of the airlines have to reschedule their flights. Most of the airlines that uh, coming into Nigeria have to divert to neighboring countries like Ghana, and, uh, Germany, and other, including Abuja. So that even uh, an airline that was about landing because of the uh, uh, problem decided to go back to um, to its destination, go back to Doha again. So you can see the animals losses that um, action caused not only the airline, but uh, not only the airline that they handle, but the entire aviation industry. So it was very, very chaotic yesterday. But thank God the whole issue has been resolved after a resolution that um, uh, the management will have to withdraw the, the package to cut all the restraining the workers from the party on strike and uh, ensure that no worker uh, was victimized or victimized. So the matter has been resolved and needs to be. Okay, so but, but, but um, I'd like us to speak. I mean, you, you are saying that the matter has been resolved, but we don't know for how long, you know, that will be until um, these workers, you know, stage another protest. And so what do you make of the concerns of these workers? They talk about salary increase, uh, you know, there's the, some other persons who've also, um, you know, talked about their consent saying, I mean, how can these persons not go home? They don't have enough money, you know, to take them home after the close of work, especially when you juxtapose the, that with the cost of, you know, transportation now and uh, coupled with fuel scarcity. I want you to speak to the demands and the consents of these workers. Do you think that, you know, is valid? Okay, so hopefully we we're able to be connected with our guests in no time. But, uh, I mean, it's a lot. So yesterday, uh, following the conversation and monitoring all that's going on, uh, some people seem to be on the side of these workers, and they say it's not a party affair now. You know, it's about uh, an individual. It's about a thing where those who should be looking out for the welfare of the people have failed. And then you order, you know, passengers to pay for X, Y, Z, say pay for cargo services and what have you, but then you're not even able to take care of, you know, the welfare of the people. And the issue of welfare will not be the first time we're talking about it. Uh, it's, it's actually ongoing in almost every sector of the economy. Uh, salary increase, you know, lack of uh, uh, favorable environment for these workers to thrive and, of course, you know, do what they ought to do or carry their jobs uh, properly. So uh, it, it's quite unfortunate. And, and others have also alluded to the fact that it's just a, 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 an avenue for the people to down to because the president had visited, and it's only protocol that if the president visits, uh, then, you know, all sort of oppression should, you know, be on standstill to some extent. But it costs, you know, the aviation sector a lot of money. Okay, we, we're being told that we have our guests back now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, you, if you can hear me, please unmute your device. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. So, do, do you okay. like me to repeat the question again? Uh, please, 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 so please. I'm asking, what do you make of the concerns of uh, the aviation workers? I mean, mostly it's about salary increase, uh, just to meet up with the you know, current state of things in the economy. Uh, some persons were also on the part of these workers yesterday whose flights were redirected, especially cargo flights, you know, to other parts of the world. And some of them, you know, were very empathic and they talked about the fact that these workers get to sleep in the office because they can't find their way home. There's no money to take them back to the house and it's not a favorable condition for them. So I'd like you to speak to it and also speak to the timing, you know, of these protests. Uh, thank you very much. Like I was saying before the connection went up, I, I said just a few weeks ago, as a few thousand workers of the of NAPCO were promoted. And when you do this mass promotion, it comes with a lot of benefits to the workers. You need to pay them their remuneration, you need to increase their salaries, you need to increase their allowances, and you need to increase every other thing. 
I don't have the details of what it has gone on, but from what we are hearing is just about salary. But the management of NACO has come up and said, okay, we have we had an agreement with you that we're going to resolve some of these things before we decided to do one strike. Uh, but you can't uh, put some of their workers in you know, because they need to protect their workers, they need to do whatever they can do to protect their workers. I think there was um, a kind of a missing gap, a communication gap that actually led to these workers going on strike. The airline didn't see it coming. Nobody saw it coming because we thought that this issue uh, should have been resolved before it uh, evolved into what we had yesterday. So it's the responsibility of the management to, to match their words with them, to match their words with action and ensure that the workers are well taken care of. One thing I've also realized in the aviation industry is that we don't engage enough or um, the unions don't um, engage enough. And I believe that uh, most times um, the management lack all the space to uh, resolve some of the issues that need to be resolved. And the reason the workers union, you know, uh, use the last resource, which is try to question their demand. So um, by and large, I want to believe that this matter has been resolved. This matter will not come up again. Uh, but we never can tell. Um, in this country, strike is usually the last resort to question any demand. So we also hope that we will never encounter um, what we encountered yesterday because uh, the, the problem is the, the problem is brought to the airlines, the problem is brought to the entire aviation industry which even made the House of Representatives to move into the matter and this was a notable resolution. And before that resolution came yesterday, uh, before they called up that strike yesterday, they had a meeting where they had a resolution that, that all the workers' demands will be met as quickly as possible. All the uh, court case uh, that they, 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 they brought uh, restraining the workers from um, embarking on that strike should be vacated and also to promise them that no worker will be which which hunt uh for the action they took yesterday. I think uh, that's the best thing to, to do uh, considering the how sensitive the vision industry is. Okay, well, 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 Shonari, uh, uh, talking about how sensitive, and sorry to interject there, please, uh, uh, talking about how sensitive the aviation industry is, um, um, do, what do you say about the pension for unions, especially, uh, or including, maybe, let me say, in the aviation sector, to embark on such strike that um, affect the, the economy, affect the ranking or the rating or the perception internationally of Nigeria, reputation in the aviation sector of Nigeria, and affects uh, investment, foreign inflow of investment, and affects uh, foreign businesses in the country. Um, uh, what would you say about the penchant of these unions to embark on such strikes, uh, you know, uh, without much room for warning and room for, uh, you know, uh, people to get ready um, to yeah. prepare, be it travelers, yeah. be it, uh, uh, you know, the airlines, be it those in the aviation sector government, to prepare. You know, because what we see in other parts of the world is like in the UK, for instance, it'll give them some time. We're going to go on so everyone gets ready. And um, the, the Narco Avion says that the uh, uh, this, this strike bothered, it, it, it somehow became economic sabotage. They called it economic sabotage because apart from the fact that they just went on the strike without, you know, much time or room for preparation and warning, uh, there was also a court order. So do you agree? Um, that you know, this this union sometimes do these things. They they get out of out of hand. They go extreme uh, to extreme lengths. Yes, thank you very much for that question. Yes, I've always um, told people who are ready to listen that uh, the type of unionism we have in Nigeria is like the I'm sorry to use that word like bolekaja. We don't decide without following the law, without following the rules, and we embark on strikes. We can't even consider it the legal implication of the, uh, the actions that they take. I've never supported the, the, the union in the way the short business is, especially if it's short business is because uh, you don't give room to people to negotiate and you just don't go on strike without proper notice. Secondly, that strike was illegal because the NAPO um, as a company 
had procured, or no, let me not say procured, gotten injunction to stop these workers. It means the workers violated the court injunction in order restraining them from from embarking on that strike, which to me is very, very easy. So, but you know, the way we do things in this part of the world, we do things we start even looking at the consequences of our actions or what our actions, the, the danger is bring to the businesses and the society in general. Um, before you can embark on strike, there must be a timeline. Yeah, they, they must have even informed the airlines. I'm, and I'm very sure the airlines even have even bothered to begin their flights into Nigeria if they knew that strike was going to go on because it has caused them an enormous uh, loss. It. it has caused them uh, a lot of dislocation. Um, that so by and large, I feel that the um, um, way we carry on with businesses, this is what we do in Nigeria. We just see the union coming and shut businesses. Mm -hmm. They don't need to uh, MME to by communication services limited in the past to start giving enough warning and to impact and strike. I'm not saying they shouldn't be back on side. I'm not saying they shouldn't protect the interests of their workers, but we must do things that portray us as um, reasonable people, as people who follow due process. We shouldn't just do things as if we are in banana republic. We should follow the ground, we should follow the rules, uh, engage enough with management before you call your members out on the side. Even if you're going to call them out on strike, you need to give a lot of notice. You need to sensitize the airlines, your customers, and what um, uh, you're planning to do so that people can prepare, people can get ready for the work. But yesterday, I took sympathy on so many people who were oblivious of what was going to happen. They came to the airport only for them to be told that they would okay. be some were going to resume truth, some were going to resume work in the UK, in the other countries. What are they going to tell them? So, so do you think that there should be a legal implication for this action? I mean, it's, it's very irresponsible, just like a lot of persons have described it. Should there be a legal implication? Any sort of consequence? Yes. Uh, you also need to be very careful. You only are a business that is very, very sensitive. You, and you know our judicial system in Nigeria that is very, very slow with that then cases might be cost for close to one year, two years, three years, five years, even ten years. So where does that leave you as a company that needs to provide services to the people? And part of the resolution yesterday, part of the agreement was that that matter will have to be vacated. If we do not vacate that matter because they have untwisted them nothing. And NACO is seen as a, a, a way of you know, resolving the matter uh, as quickly as possible because they also have their own name to protect, their integrity, corporate uh, integrity to protect. So, uh, consequently, they, they, they have to jump to the chain of the, of the workers because the workers do the grades here, the workers are holding the long, um, uh, the long part of the street here. So they need to resolve it as quickly as possible because their clients do not ask you uh, for uh, why the reason. Yes, you have the reason for going to court to protect your business, but at the same time, your clients do not want to be in the head up in the midst of all these crises. They want services, they want, um, and some of them have even paid off. So if you're not giving them the services that they require, they may have to go to court to hold you and to ask for to press for, to press for damages and where does that lead you as a company? All right. So uh, I believe that yeah. they have the right. Yeah. Like I said, the uh, action was clearly illegal, which the workers have not denied. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Shonorik, because of time, I sincere apologies, because of time, very quickly, very quickly, please, very quickly in a sentence or two, there are very few countries in the world who have an entire ministry uh, dedicated to aviation. In Nigeria, we have a whole ministry for aviation, which is a novel, you know. Um, uh, why would do we have a ministry uh, for aviation? And then we usually see that uh, issues that can be addressed, you know, some of these little things are not taken up by the Ministry of Aviation to solve, so it doesn't escalate to this level. Very briefly, please. Yes, yes. There's nothing the ministry could have done in this matter. It's um, an issue involving 
um, a company and its uh, workers. So it's an internal problem that has nothing to do with the ministry or the federal government. Uh, what the federal government did through the House of Reps, and I'm sure also the Ministry of Education uh, would have prevailed on workers to go back to work because when the yeah, English they were going to give to Nigeria, but honestly, it has nothing to do with Nigeria. Um, we've seen Lufthansa Airlines, we've seen big corporations, British Airways and pilots. Even recently, we saw Kenya Airways pilots down too, um, and that caused a lot of problems. It's nothing new. We think uh, it was in the uh, advanced line. Oh, right. in, uh, okay. So uh, there's nothing new. Only that we oh. need to be very careful because uh, we are sitting on the economy that is very, very fragile. So we oh. shouldn't do anything to compound that economy. All right. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Wally uh, Shadari, who is the aviation editor of the New Telegraph newspaper. Very, very informed analysis. And we look forward to having you again on the program soon. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, uh, still ahead on the program, we have more discussions. Mercy? Definitely. When we return, we'll be looking at the possibility of uh, buying petrol at 800 Naira per liter. Uh, that's if, you know, you have uh, petrol subsidy being removed. Please stay with us.